We have all experienced it. You see your friends and there is this new guy who starts talking on a subject he clearly doesn't know much about. With quick research of your own, you find out that everything he said is completely wrong, but he doesn't seem to get it himself, that everything isn't true. Everyone else at the table doesn't seem to care too much if it's right or wrong. They don't question anything he says. You start wondering if this guy just acts like he knows it all or if he doesn't even know that everything he says is bullshit. This is the Dunning-Kruger effect in action. People who know very little about the subject tend to overestimate how much they know because they just don't know how much they don't know. As a result, the people who are most confident in their ability are not usually the ones who should be. On the other hand, we have the ones who actually know a lot about the subject and that's the reason why they tend to underestimate what they know. Because they know what they don't know, which humbles them. The Dunning-Kruger effect is named after David Dunning and Justin Kruger, the two scientists who first discovered this psychological phenomenon in 1999. They carried out a research titled Unskilled and Unaware of It, where they tested a group of people on grammar, humor and logic. The results were always the same within all test categories. The participants who thought themselves to be the best were actually just the most confident, but ended up to be the worst at the tests. While the people who did really well overestimated how good everyone else was. Now we may think how that can be even possible, to be the horribly wrong self-reflecting how well we did at the test. We surely should know a direction if we were good or bad, but that only applies when we truly know nothing about the subject. If we learn at least a little bit about something, we are not sure that we know nothing anymore, we clearly know something. But because it's not much yet, we have no clue how much there is still to learn. We simply don't know what we don't know. We are not yet skilled enough to accurately access our knowledge and abilities, so we think we know much more than we actually do. Imagine yourself being handed a test about a topic you literally know nothing about. Your preparation is simply to watch a one hour documentary on the topic. Now you might think that you probably managed to be above average on that test, because you just watched this documentary on the topic. Well, this is the Dunning-Kruger effect at work. Just because you watched a single documentary doesn't mean anything. And even if you watch all the documentaries, read all the books, read every humanly reachable information on that topic there is, and you ace the test, it's still just the tip of the iceberg when it's about the subject in general. Maybe the person who wrote the test was influenced by the Dunning-Kruger effect himself. So what value would that test have? But of course, you only need to know as much as the test requires you to know to succeed in it, which is true. But then most people who know less tend to overestimate their own knowledge. And we see this every day, from people complaining about their job and not getting the promotion they think they deserve, to a close relative who talks big and thinks he knows everything, even though everything he says is wrong. But even we, who check that information on the internet, if it's true or not, we think we are in the right, but we actually only make a quick Google search and maybe look at five results, which already convinces us because we ourselves also know only little about the topic. Maybe your logical thinking ability lets you conclude certain subjects a bit quicker than others, but in the end it all means nothing. When we get a grade at school, which undercuts our expectations, we tend to quickly look out for justifications. The likes of that the teacher doesn't like us or that we were unlucky with the questions which were asked on the test and so on. Most people in a company would assume that they are at least above average in what they do. But that in itself can't be true because how good you are is measured against all the other colleagues. So it must always generate a nicely shaped bell curve. It makes no sense that it would be possible for most employees to be above average. 
or for most people to be above average. Some scientists argue that the Dunning-Kruger effect might not be because of poor judgement, but more like that the poor performers want to make themselves look better than they are. While I can get where this argument is coming from, it doesn't make sense because this all happens to a lot of people in situations where they couldn't possibly be interested in wanting to look better than they are. The underlying truth it's just that we can't ever possibly judge our own knowledge based on little knowledge to begin with. We can only make broad assumptions, but it's extremely inaccurate and more like pointing randomly to any point on a scale. That leads us to metacognition which is the awareness of your own thought process. You're able to plan, overview and access your own performance and your understanding. It helps you make an assessment of your level of knowledge and skill on a certain task or subject. David Dunning and Justin Kruger discovered that people with less knowledge about the subject also have lesser metacognitive activities around that subject. That's how they can't possibly recognize their own incompetence. The sad thing is that people who know the least are also the people who are least likely to take up on learning opportunities. Think about all your colleagues who think they are the top crop and at least above average which can't be possible for most people or most employees in a company. People who think they are better than the average tend to not accept help from most people in a company. Otherwise they might compromise their own grading system by accepting that they still have to learn so many things and that doesn't feel all that great for most people. On the other hand you have highly skilled people and most of them don't recognize that because they overestimate their colleagues ability. Even though they should teach others, they tend to not to because they underestimate their own importance and their own skills. Even today you see a lot of scammers on the internet who try to sell their programs even though they might have little to no knowledge about the likes of investing or whatever. Maybe they were just lucky with one of their own investments and now they teach others just nonsense out of that one lucky experience they had. Now more than ever, misinformation is a bigger problem than ignorance. People briefly glance through a topic and instantly scream all that information outwards, even though they know just very little about it. So more often than not, we are listening to very confident people who know very little about things. It is very convenient if you can accept very little information to be satisfied with the idea itself. We see it today, when it's about the 5G death radiation to anti-vaccination campaigns. People are constantly looking for the next conspiracy and they only need very little information to be completely obsessed with the idea being true. So they start sharing too and follow gurus about the subjects. Then, the more people there are, the easier new people are convinced. Why is it that the least knowledgeable people are the loudest and most confident ones? And the people with true answers are the most quiet ones in most cases. Well, simply put, it's just the Dunning-Kruger effect at work again. And it's quite dangerous because people get into a feedback loop of misinformation this way. Because the wrong people speak up. Truly knowledgeable people as told before know that they did well at the test but they also tend to overestimate the performance of everyone around them. This stems from how easy the test may have been for them. So they automatically think it's nothing special. They discord very well and assume that others definitely did so too. In fact if you think your work is not good enough then it's already probably better than most. Because unlike the people at the bottom of the percentile you know what you don't know, so you are more willing to improve. The Dunning-Kruger effect also has its positive sides. It helps us to try new things and gives us confidence in doing so. Otherwise we would be even more intimidated by new things than we are anyways already. 
It gives us the necessary strength to pursue something initially. But once we have taken that first step, it's up to us to keep going when we find out that we definitely don't know enough right now. We must fight the thought of realization that we've only just scratched the surface and there's still a long way to go. Some people may tell you that you shouldn't compare yourself to others. Of course you shouldn't do it excessively, but you always should compare yourself at least a bit to others. You should be realistic. You can gain great motivation from comparing yourself to others, to learn something from them and to further yourself. Even if you start something entirely new, always remember that there is probably still a long way to go. Even though you feel like you already know a lot, you probably don't. But don't let it intimidate you. To learn things and have things to do is the essence of what makes life interesting. Always stay curious of what lies ahead. Even if you feel highly confident in your knowledge, you should most of the time question yourself before you speak up. You want to be the person who shares quality information and not quantity. When your word truly counts, people will start to listen and value your opinion in high regard. Other than when you play the quantity route and what you say is only true for 20% of the time. People will probably not notice too quickly, if at all, but if they do, your word won't have as much value anymore and they probably won't listen too carefully anymore. Be open to feedback and criticism. While it's true that people shouldn't discourage your dreams, you need to understand that sometimes you may be overestimating your skills. There is bad and good feedback, which is completely your decision. You shouldn't listen to every feedback there is. But some criticism is extremely important and valuable. To know which one is, is a skill to be learned in itself. Learn to be aware of the Dunning-Kruger effect which also does its work on yourself and try to improve your own grading system by questioning your own information and opinions. So your quality of information improves overall tremendously. Don't shy away from questioning yourself and others. Don't be satisfied with the little knowledge you have. Keep improving, continue learning, always ask questions and stay curious. Living out your curiosity is a very important thing. Seeing what you are capable of, but also seeing what you are currently maybe not capable of is also very important. These skills will definitely reward you in the future. Don't hunt the reward, but improve yourself so the reward comes to you. Thank you for watching, kiss on your belly and see you next time.